Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny here with my sweet husband Jerry and we are here for our monthly, monthly. Um, typically front porch chats but because this is August we are on the back porch because it is about French porch getting sun. Yeah, front porch is getting sun, the back porch is in the shade. The beauty of having two porches is that you can move around the sun. Yes. Yes. So we're on the back porch this week, and in our last video, or one of our last videos, we had asked you, the viewers, to submit questions to us um, so that we could answer those questions. Anything you wanted to ask us that you could ask and that we would answer. Jerry doesn't know the questions just because I've just gone through and screenshotted, and so we're just gonna go through. Um, you had some amazing questions. There were a couple, well, there were several that were within the same category. So even if I didn't pick yours, it was just because of how I was scrolling. But there was a lot of in the same categories. So we we'll, should answer those questions for you. Um, we were debating on whether or not of keeping these um, porch chats because the analytics on YouTube show that they're not very popular. But according to your comments. Yeah, it, it, the, the YouTube says lots of times when the video runs it gives us information about how it's going and it says that most regular viewers are not watching right most now, i don't know how accurate that is or what how to gauge that but that that would be why yeah. because uh, the regular viewers or su subscribers go to watch our video from the start it, it helps the, promote it um, to other people yeah it does it does so it's big an analytics and social media are crazy but when we did this video and asking y'all for your input, yeah, then, then it was great. So um, I think we'll, I like this format because that way we can just answer your questions and give you details and updates on what's going on. We do have some really fun updates that we'll give you. I haven't even talked to him about this. Some really fun updates that we have um, coming up in our very, very near future that we will talk to you about that. But without further ado, let's get to the questions. All right. So the first one is from Julie Kelly, and she says, are the new Rose of Sharon plants invasive like the old ones? I had bad experiences with them years ago. There was a lot of questions on this. Huh. Um, yes. And so according to Proven Winners website, that the chiffon series, because it has the frilly center, that it produces a whole lot less seeds than ones in the past. So if they do produce seeds, it is very minimal and easily controlled. So that's according to Proven Winners website. Here, we have never had an issue, but no. also we don't have an issue with butterfly bushes being invasive. No, yeah, because yeah. But we've had rows of sharing on the lot, yeah. you know, down at the nursery with in bloom and lose their flowers. That means seeds go everywhere out there. And we have weeds everywhere out there sometimes. Trust me, we have weeds everywhere. So they germinate and we get rid of the weeds. And so um, I've never seen a rose of Sharon come up. So. Yeah. Again, we're North Carolina Zone 7B. So this is what is in our environment. You be the student of your garden and know that. All right. Melanie Rowe said, question, what did you both do for jobs before the nursery? <laughs> you me go first? Sure. Okay. So even as a little girl, I always knew I wanted to be two things. I wanted to be a mama and I wanted to be a teacher. And mission accomplished. Of course, we have three kids. Um, I went to school, I went to Appalachian State University, um, and I was an education major. I taught seventh grade for four and a half years before we had our first child, Emily. And we knew early on when we got married that when we had our first baby that I would come home and stay at home, be a stay at home mom which um, that is what we did and I loved it. It's of course, obviously, I mean, to say it's hard is an understatement, right? But um, yeah, so I was a teacher, an educator, seventh grade, language arts and social studies. And you kind sir? Yes, so I was a teacher also. Mm -hmm. um, four years, yeah, four years, elementary physical education in Charlotte. Yep. Um, great school had some of the early on that was early on owners of the Carolina Panthers yep. grandkids going there so it was a great school great environment for physical education um, just in, enjoyed it but I was there for four years and my parents had started a 
in electronics where we sell um, sharp multifunction devices such as copiers, scanners, that kind of thing. Right when I did get that job, so we were all, I was getting the job in Charlotte and then they were starting the copier company. My father had been in that business for, since I was in middle school, so he was very familiar with it. So we, we shortly, right after that, got married in 2000, I've been two years. So well, and we did know that I want that when we had our first baby that I would come yeah. home, and not that you can't live on a teacher's salary. You absolutely can, um, but this this opportunity yeah, was just, for Jerry to work with yeah. his family and the flexibility and the freedom and to do other things. Yeah. Um, so that's the decision that we made was that he left teaching and went to go work for them. I did. Yeah. And you technically st you still work for them. Yep. Technically. Te <laughs> 2020 kind of <laughs> whew, uh, yeah. pulled you away a little bit. It was a little crazy around here. I was like, no, yeah. you can't go to the office. I need yeah. you here. Okay, moving on. Next question. Okay, so there was a ton of questions about this one. Um, this is from Melissa Sheehan, and she says, I vote to keep the front porch chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you still planning on keeping your online sales? So online sales was a, as far as sales go, was an absolute, if you were to start a business and on the first day and you said we're going to sell something, that is like the best thing ever. I mean, it was, it was tons of sales right off the bat, all the way through the winter, but then came, you know, where we have to pack, fulfill, you know, those fulfill orders. the orders, try to keep up with customer service, try to keep customers happy. Uh, try to keep growing our plants, do our landscaping, do it. So it became very difficult. So when I look at the whole total, so also, <laughs> I just don't have a teaching degree. It's just, it's odd. I have we have a you know a business management degree, mm -hmm. two. It was a sports management degree, but it's a very diverse degree. It's a very good degree. Um, so just since business sense tells me, oh, okay, we got to have a warehouse. We're going to have to have packers all the time was this thing is going to go from go gangbusters probably next year mm -hmm. when we could easily do a ton and not be able to keep up with it so from our perspective and the way we're seeing things going with shipping and labor with fedex and ups and not taking care of packages it's just not something that we want to continue doing so it's not it's not to say that we wouldn't ever do it again it's just that we're not going to do it next year Right, and Wanda, you had a, a, a question in here, too, um, about that. Wanda Braswell, she says, Jenny, I was wondering why the mail order plants was not the direction you all decided to go. What went wrong? So, just like Jerry said, y the customers were amazing. I mean, selling the product was not the problem at all. We had yeah. amazing orders, but we were and we knew we didn't know you don't sometimes you just don't know you know that you don't know what you don't know if that makes any kind of sense and we had never done massive shipping we shipped to all 48 states um, mm -hmm. we had people in other countries asking us to ship to them and we didn't go that route um, but there is so much logistics and infrastructure that has to go in to doing a mail order business and then you throw on top of that what you're sending out is a live product. We weren't send, sending out t-shirts or hats or tennis shoes. These are live product. And it was extreme, I would say, I get a little bit more, I'm an emotional person, can you tell? Like I, I connect emotionally with people. Jerry's very like, matter of fact. Um, but it was a very stressful time for our family because um, finding the right labor force was extremely hard. God bless, we had Ronnie, who was a friend of ours, who he had a career in shipping. That's what he did, packaging and shipping. And he came on board with us, and we would not have made it without Ronnie. Um, but we needed, we needed a force of a, of a minimum of like 10 people, and we were working with like maybe five, including our children. Um, and so knowing to do it right and do it long term, You've got to have a whole customer service. You've got to have a whole shipping department. You've got to have packers and pickers and 
um, honestly, that's just not the direction we want our company to go. Yeah, so, that's the key thing is the direction because right. what we're concentrating on are videos like this, yes. trying to educate our customers all over the United States and continue to bring people from everywhere to our garden center here right. at um, Right. Creekside so we, we had a big, yeah. you know, heart to heart and it was our two, our, our three main focuses are um, one, having an environment where our family can grow and bloom and thrive because that's priority number one for our family to be healthy and happy and productive. Um, two, videos. We want to really focus on bringing you great quality content and videos. Um, and yep. then three, creating Creekside as a destination garden center so that when you're coming from Indiana or you're coming from West Virginia or you're coming from um, Oklahoma that you're not disappointed and you get here and you're like, oh. Yeah, that was a big wow. thing, you oh, know, okay. just trying to keep the inventory. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, I think if you had a question on the online ordering, then that answers that. That's why online, if you go online, there's nothing there. Right. And we there need will be t-shirts yes. pretty soon. Yes. So we, we're going to yeah. tweak that. We, we need, we just, time. We need to fix the website. Um, so we will not, because somebody else had asked, and I don't know if I did a screenshot, but forgive me, the one that asked that we're not shipping plants, but no, we're not going to ship fertilizers, land and sea, soil, none of that. The only thing that we would be shipping out would be t-shirts, merchandise. Um, and so we, again, we're working on that for the holiday season. We will have those up and ready to go. So if you want to buy yourself a birthday Christmas present or something, then, or give one to somebody, we'll have those available and all the ones that we've been wearing. So we've got tons of them. Yep. Okay. Now this is a fun one. I like this one. I, I think I know Jerry's answer. Mm. Let's see this. Let's do this. Let's see if Jerry can tell what my answer is going to be no. and I'll tell what Jerry's answer. No, you'll, this is a good one. <laughs> you'll like this one. Okay. So this is from Mary Ann. My question, if you had the opportunity to move to anywhere in the continental USA, where would you go to grow your best garden ever? And she wants y'all to answer this too. So go to the video and answer where you would do it. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. So where do you think I would go? Mountains. Yes. So I definitely Blue Ridge Mountains, North Carolina, Tennessee, that area. I'd go there in a heartbeat. Not that I want to leave here. I just, but that's definitely where I want to go. And I say for you, Clemson. Yes. Yeah. See? So what happens when you've been so together? Clemson, you get both of the worlds. You you the do. mountains are just right there, down in the lake and the foothills and the beautiful it sunsets and Clemson is a beautiful yeah. not only just not just because I don't know if you know it's Clemson University but Clemson University is in the town of uh, Clemson, Clemson. Yep. so um, there you go okay uh, yes Jeannie <sighs> Schwar I'm sorry I, we'll talk about vocabulary later well, that's a whole nother subject um, <laughs> do I understand correctly that you are open only three days a week how do you manage with only three days of sales thanks for all the good info well, you're welcome. Um, I'll start and then you can finish if you want to jump in there. So, yes, we are only open three days a week. I equate it, if you are a southerner, the good barbecue joints, they're only open on the weekend. So if you want to go get that good barbecue, you know when you got to get there. Same thing here. The nursery is at our house. It's all on the same property. Um, we are at the nursery all the time. So we have Jerry's there, I'm there, our kids are there. Um, we know that long term that won't be sustainable, that we could always have to be at the nursery. Um, but for 99% of the time, we are there. So we are the ones working there along with, we do have a staff, but our staff is relatively small. We don't have massive amounts of employees. We truly are a family business. Um, but keep in mind, I homeschool the three kids. Jerry does have the job that we talked about with his parents, his parents' company. Um, we are the grower, so we also have to have time to grow these plants. Again, we don't have a massive um, staff. To, we don't have growers upon growers that do this. He's the grower. I help, but he's the grower. Um, we also do some landscaping in there, and then you have the mail order stuff. So really, three days a week, that's really all that we want to be open and during those three days yeah, it I mean, is, we, it, I we mean, are go it is not you, statistically when you look at it yeah in the i mean i can only see extra days during the week 
through the peak of the season, which April, would be May. late late March, April, and May, and right. and then after that, it's it's not worth the the, the time to for to be open on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then at number two, we're making a choice for our family. We made a choice for how we want to operate our business, and we have tr we have spent a lot of time doing this, and we have figured it out. So that that would be you know, one of the main reasons. Yeah. Because all most of your sales happen on a Saturday anyway, and then we were selling out a product, so we can't really, it's, you know, yeah. And then we're growing it, so you got to have time in there to, Well, you if you want us to keep making videos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you, you want the videos to keep coming, then, you know, that's just it. Because yeah. we are, I don't, I don't know that people really realize how intimately involved we are with this nursery which leads us into the second question. Myra Gallagher said, um, I enjoy your front porch chats, thank you. How and when did you start your nursery? So we have a whole video on that, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna link it in the description um, below. So just go to the description, it will be linked there. We did a whole story about that. But basically, Jerry and I started Creekside Nursery um, in 2005. Mm -hmm. In 2005, from literally nothing, there was no Creekside. We are called Creekside because there is a creek that cuts our property <laughs> in half. Um, we had no infrastructure other than my daddy was a pig farmer and he had an old hog barn that he and Jerry converted to a greenhouse. So we have literally built Creekside, I don't want to say from nothing because there's we God has yeah. blessed us with this land, the desire to do this, the, the physical abilities. So I don't say we started from nothing, but we started from scratch, if that makes sense. Right, we didn't go and buy a nursery somewhere or we my didn't dad didn't one. have a nursery, nursery going that I came into or something like that. We, yeah. we started it from, right. you know, and we learned through the process. It's just like when you go to school, you know, you you learn, you read books, you read papers. You know, we did all that on our own, you know, and, and over the years. So that's how you go from 2005 to 2021. Right. That's a lot of experience. A lot of experience. Yes. Cindy Davison says, Proven Winners has some gorgeous plants. Mm -hmm. Very true. But I can't find them in our local nurseries. Big problem. Yeah. Hear that all the time. Um, does PW sell all their plants online? And I would say yes and, no. yes and no. So the best way to do it is just to go to provenwinners.com. Just go straight to their website um, and you can order directly from them. I know that you can get just about like all of their annuals. You can get their shrubs. Now they're not going to be a three gallon shrub. Some of them will come in two gallons, mm. I think. Maybe. Most of it's one gallon. Most of it's one gallon or a quart, um, but you can look that way. Of course, right now they're not going to be shipping because it's the middle of the summer, and then it'll just be seasonally when they can actually ship. But the, the best place that I can tell you to go to right now is provenwinners.com, and you can um, order from them. All right. Sandra, oh gosh, Sandra S. I'm just going to say Sandra S. When is a good time to cut back my butterfly bush? I live in the panhandle of Florida, zone 8B. Love your front porch chats. Thank you, Miss Sandra. Um, again, we did a video on this, but the really the optimal time to prune your butterfly bushes is late winter, early spring, because butterfly- Whatever that is for you. Yeah, whatever that is for you. So for us, that is like February, um, February into beginning of March. Butterfly bushes bloom on new growth, so if you need to sh trim them, shape them, you want to do that um, before the new flush comes mm -hmm. out, so that way they don't look so sticky um, in the wintertime. But for you in Florida, I mean, that could be maybe January into February. So um, just kind of when the season starts to begin getting a little bit warmer, go ahead and prune them back. Um, I'll, again, I will link that video in the description below. Um, Queen Sophie, that's a fun name. Um, what, this will be a good one for Jerry. I have some answers, but this will be good for him. What are your recommendations for an evergreen privacy hedge? Mm -hmm. And then plus a flowering non-evergreen privacy hedge. Spot is sun for five hours 
please help. I have crazy neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just talked about this today <laughs> with a couple that had the old, whatever you do, don't do this, Leland Cypress. Mm -hmm. um, we would do, I would do Fudger Green Giant. So you can look that one up. Yep, and Fudger then Green Giant, T-H-U-J-A. Yep, and so in, in there, in front of that, I would do like Limelight Hydrangea. Mm-hmm. And those Roses of Sharon. Yeah, Roses of Sharon. You know, they get tall, but, you know, the few so, are yeah, stepping so the, it down. Yeah, so Thuja Green Giant is a nice, big, pyramidal tree, evergreen, very easy. Yeah. Um, emerald Green Arborvitaes. They're skinnier, not quite as tall, so it depends on what your definition of tall is. Yeah, because the Thuja can get like 15 feet wide at the bottom. Right. Um, and there's a bee around me. Um, so the honeybee, we're good. Yellow jacket, not so much. Um, Nellie Stevens hollies are really good. So mm -hmm. I love Nellie Stevens. We have them. Just don't put it on the corner of your house, but it makes a beautiful screen. And then the flowering, like we said, any kind of those pinnacle hydrangeas, so fire lights, lime lights, um, quick fires, uh, the roses of Sharon, camellias. I know that's an evergreen. Camellias would be good. Depends on your, well, you said, you didn't tell me what zone you were. Yeah. So those are some suggestions for you. B, go away. All right, Wanda, Wanda Barlow. Can you plant a blue spruce with success in our zone 7B? If so, which kind of blue spruce? So I don't know about a blue spruce, but we've had blue evergreens. So like the um, dwarf um, horseman. It's a blue atlas yeah, cedar. Yeah. So they're actually a type of cedar and not a spruce. Yeah. So cedars would be better. You still have that beautiful color. Um, Carolina sapphire is another. Cedar. Is yeah. a cedar. It's blue a really cedar. pretty one too. Fat Albert. So is a, yeah, Fat Albert. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little, you just have to make sure you get the right um, sun conditions on that. But we have a Fat Albert up at the gate and it's doing very well. Um, so those would be a Deodora or Deodoras. That's a cedar. Mm -hmm. It's a blue one. I would stick with that. Yeah. yeah. So maybe not a spruce, but cedars. And you can get blue ones in that. All right. Stitch by stitch. Hmm. Um, I enjoy them, Front Porch Chats. But what if you did a Q&A live stream? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Yeah. So she has a two-part question. So, yes, we have seriously considered that. Because now we actually have good internet because we had to, <laughs> we're in the middle of nowhere. We had horrible, horrible internet, which is not good when you have a YouTube channel. So we ended up having to, uh, uh, almost exactly a year ago, we got a dedicated fiber line to the house because of the business and the fact that our kids are homeschooled and do um, some classes online. So now we actually have the technology available to us that we we could actually do a live stream and it wouldn't be like the rah, 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 and cutting out on you so we we would love to do that and so we need to i would say like once a month you know that would be fun to do um also do you think a butterfly bush would grow in a pot absolutely i have a miss oh. molly that has been in a butterfly bush for years it's a good, um, good pot a good yeah, size th yeah it's a big pot Pugsters will do great in a pot, those little smaller ones. So, yes, absolutely. Just make sure you know what your mature size of your plant's going to be. And I always tell people, get the biggest pot that mm. your space will allow. So, absolutely. Right on. Yes. Uh, Janine Jones, um, when is a good time to plant perennials in the south? I am in central Alabama, zone 7B. Is it still really hot? It, it, it is, yes, it is really, yes, mm -hmm. I totally misread that, but yes, it is still hot. Um, do I wait till September? Love the front porch chats. Um, so sweet. Thank you for all that encouragement. So, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I tell people, because people are asking this all the time right now, I tell people September, October, November is a great time. Really, you can go beyond that, but those are the, the prime times. I know for us, September can still be hot and dry. Yeah, but we start planting. Oh, September. we do. We do. Um, but you can go beyond that, like October, November, and you yeah. will be Yeah, I mean, planting. sometimes you just want to be sure to get some perennials in before it gets too cold. Yes. Yeah. But too cold is a relative term when you're in the south. Yeah. We're not talking about, you know, Wisconsin here. That's right. All right. South is different. Yes, the south. Oh. The south is different, and I think Florida. Florida, I think you're just your own... 
geographical hmm. location. That's right. Very interesting. So that is all that we have time for for today. Um, we will definitely revisit this. This has been fun. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. You like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to tell them what we're doing in the next two weeks? So yeah, next two weeks we got a good bit of traveling going on. We leave. What is this video? Today is so today is Saturday. This yeah. will so just. This is hence why we're wearing matching clothes is because the nursery, came was, from the nursery. The nursery <laughs> was open and um, so we came in and did this video um, because, so today is Saturday, on bright and early Monday morning, we are getting on a jet plane and yep. heading up to New Hampshire, New Hampshire Pleasant View. to Pleasant View Gardens. Mm -hmm. They have been so gracious and invited us to come um, tour their beautiful display gardens and look in their greenhouses so of course we will do um, a whole video on all of that um, but pleasant view if you don't so pleasant view is one of the they're one of the owners the huntingtons are part of the owners of, of proven winners um, and their nursery is like i said in loudon new hampshire they are where a lot of our annuals come from. So the annuals from Proven Winners either come from Pleasant View or Four, Four Star. Star. Four Star is in Michigan. So this week, this Monday, we're going to New Hampshire. Yeah. The next Monday, we guess where Mich we're going? We're going to Michigan. We're going to Michigan. Yeah. So that is going to be a, both of them we are so stinking excited about. Um, but when we go to Michigan, because also in Michigan, you have Four Star. Again, gorgeous display garden. So we'll be doing that. We'll be doing videos on that. Then we would be staying um, a couple of extra days and going to Walter's Gardens, which is the mm -hmm. nursery, the perennial nursery. So they have tons of gorgeous um, plants in their own right. And then they also are the growers for the Proven Winners perennials. So we're going to do tours of that place. And then we're also going to go to Spring Meadows, which is the shrub nursery. So they are the growers, breeders, producers of the Proven Winners shrubs. So that will be, um, we have a whirlwind of two weeks of lots of travel, which is different from our, you know us, we're little homebodies. So we're super excited though um, to go and we are so grateful for um, both the Huntingtons with Pleasant View inviting us up and then the entire four star team and Walters and Spring Meadows and Erica who's arranged this whole thing just the whole Proven Winter staff has just been fantastic and so we can't wait to show this to you I can't wait to see it because I've only seen pictures and videos yeah yeah so it's going to be a lot of video I mean that's that's so just, get ready for yeah. a video overload of some major gorgeous gardens. Yeah, we'll be yeah, and we'll see some new plants, I'm sure. Yeah, you know. and the fields because yeah. at Walters and at Spring Meadow, they just have fields of plants. So it's a field of daylilies. It's a field of the summerific hibiscus, and just rows upon rows and upon rows. Um, if you don't follow them on, on social media, you need to. I'll try to remember and, and link those in the description too. But um, yeah, so lots of traveling coming up. And so we'll keep you posted on that. Yep. I hope you found this fun, informative. Um, we will, I think we'll definitely, if y'all like this, then we'll just keep doing it this way. And um, see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Right. We, want, we want to give you content that you enjoy and that you find value in, and we don't want to waste your time. Yeah. So if you are enjoying this and you like the question answer session, we'll just keep going. Um, but as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We will see you in New Hampshire. Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>